Oh man, holy sugar, no wonder why this thing don't work. What we're gonna talk about today is the IBR, and this applies to most of the models from 2010 to like 2015. So the issue we're having with this one is when you go to drive it, alarm will come on and you'll get a brake light on the dashboard. You can pull the key off, reset it, and you can get it to work a little bit. When you're replacing the IBR module with these, unfortunately you do need the bud system. If you're having trouble getting the bud system, let me know, I'll help you find one. So we go into the faults and of course IBR. All IBR stuff. IBR malfunction, torque request failure, actuator movement. We'll start at the top. I already replaced the wiring harness on this last year, so I know it's not the wiring harness. So if you know your wiring's good, you're getting codes. Thing to do when you're trying to diagnose this IBR system is to take the two bolts that hold all the pieces to the motor so it all moves on these two little short bolts. If it's hard to move before you replace the IBR motor, you want to make sure that that thing's moving freely on its own and then test it. You want this smooth. The motors don't go as often as you might think. Um, even if they look all crusty, this one looks terrible. Before we get at the IBR and pull this stuff off, I want to get this guard out of the way. It's just, it's just in your way when you're trying to get your arms in there. A couple of the heads of these bolts snapped off. So we're gonna have to figure out how to get those off without, hopefully without ruining this deflector. Now that we got the guard out of the way, you can get a better look at what we got going on. The biggest mistake I see people making is taking off too many bolts. A lot of these bolts will break if you try to undo them, so we don't want to take off anything that we don't have to. Right? There's only five bolts that we need to take off. There's two in the back that we start with, and that'll make this move freely. And then there's one going into the RBR motor here, and then one, two going into a fixing plate on this side. Okay, let's see if we can get it into IBR override mode. Uh, the light came on. It didn't, it didn't go up, did it? God damn it. It's not going into override mode, so we're gonna have to deal with it with the bucket down. Not that big a deal. Uh, but we want to disconnect the battery to make sure that I'm gonna say make sure that thing doesn't move on you, but it ain't moving. We'll disconnect the battery anyway. It's not binding up enough to throw that code, but still, you want this smooth, and this ain't smooth. We will take the steering cable bolt out. So we got one here on the left, one here, and then one in the back, which will go over the top with the ratcheting 13. This is nice. Gives you a little leverage. Jet ski Tom, always calling me right when I'm in the middle of something. I'm busy. This guy. I had to, I had to call and tell you. Oh yeah? I, I just asked, I asked Siri. Okay. Call you, and she did. Nice. I'm amazed. I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> Welcome to 2024, buddy. I mean, it's awesome. Don't take this one. You can tell that this goes to this. I don't know if that should be that loose, but whatever. We're going for this guy here. 13 millimeter. Break it. Um, I like electric ratchets, they're faster, but you got to be careful on these. You could, if you back it out, there's a tendency of getting stuck and then you're kind of screwed because the ratchet's all stuck on it, but we're going to do it anyway. Bug it. Yeah, 
Oh, wait. That little spacer is going to be a problem. It's just not a lot of meat to bite. Oh, that one's actually that one's that one ain't bad. Nice, I like that. Over here, so we'll leave this one alone. Can I get this in there? This seems like a disaster. <laughs> oh, I got it. That thing's still in there though. Ah, there's no meat on it. I don't know what meat on it. Now we gotta try to get those sleeves out. Come on, Bissy. These ones aren't too corroded. Sometimes they can be a real, real pain to get out. Huh? These do have a tendency to snapping on you. Hey. hey, don't do that, man. What's going on, ladies? Are you gonna put this on YouTube? Yeah, we're trying to help people fix their jet skis. So they don't have to pay me to come and do it. These ones don't usually give you a problem. <clears throat> oh, and then it's out. Oh, that one actually looks pretty good. Look at that. Oh, boy. Some crusty rusties in there. You know what's going to suck is getting this ride plate off. Just leaking right out there. I, I haven't seen one like that. It's gnarly. That's a problem for future me. Getting getting the IBR bucket off is probably the hard part about getting the motor out. The rest of this is pretty straightforward. We're disconnecting some electrical wires, a couple of coolant hoses, and then these bolts. There's seven bolts right here. Easy to get to now that you got that stuff out. And there shouldn't be any kind of problem with that. I hope. Any freeze. Okay. Oh, cock up. What's this stuck on? Oh, man. Holy sugar. No wonder why this thing don't work. All we have left to do is install the IBR module, the whole motor assembly, get that installed, get the jet pump back in, get all the bucket stuff back in, marry up the IBR to all the systems, right? Get that programmed. The IBR with the new module comes in the forward position. Yeah, five bolts, 13 millimeter.
Now when you're going to put it back in, start with this. This goes on the, the motor. This piece will, will tend to flop out on you. I got a problem. The sleeve isn't going into the Delrin bushing, so I'm gonna pull it out and see what the hell's going on there. start with that and that should go right in there and then you can put these other sleeves in and then tighten it back up the problems with the fixing plate comes from pushing too hard when you're going to screw in the bolt and it pushes the fixing plate away from the hull at an angle and now, when you try to screw, you end up cross-threading it, and then it gets stuck, you try to back it out, it starts to spin. At first, you'd get like, not maybe an eighth of a turn, and it would feel like it's binding up, right? Like it just didn't feel right. And just by sticking a flathead between the battery support plate and prying a little bit this way, I was able to, this is definitely one that you want to hand feel to get it started, or else it'll cause you a lot of trouble. Ask me how I know. Now for the one in the back right. And you just go over the top. And then just start threading it by hand to make sure that it feels like it's gonna go in nice and easy. All five bolts are in, plus the steering. Everything looks good. We're good. Get rid of that, we don't need that. Everything's pretty tight. Yes! Next we're gonna hook up buds and we'll marry it all up together, make sure it's all working. Read data. They do not match. Do you want to change it? Hell yes, I want to change it. Well, so, both of the IBRs, we're gonna assume that it is the right model. Three, three, four, one, six, L, one, one, twelve. And, okay, and that's pretty much all you gotta to do to get the IBR. That's it, it's the whole thing. Reset the throttle. Make sure that's working okay. Okay. Go up to module, IBR. Yep, it's not saying I need to update or anything. We don't have any antifreeze, so I'm gonna run it for too long. Sounds nice. Brakes are working. That's it, man. We did it. Well, I still got other shit to do.